I'm delighted. So we've got Seamus Kenny with us. He's the uh, operations manager at uh, Mead Gaelic Football and a former teammate of Anthony Moyes as well. Seamus, good morning to you. How are you doing? Hey, Jared. How's things? How's it going? Um, All good. We, we were very interested in just trying to get a, a handle on how um, GA funding generally works and, and what the role of the counties are. You know, just the, the conversation has kind of um, gone from Dublin get too much money to the counties themselves need to do more with the money they're getting. And it's hard for us on the outside to know exactly how game development funding is distributed and what it's used for when it gets to the counties. So I wonder if you could talk to us a little bit about um, what your role is within this whole process and, and what me they're doing to try and boost the number of coaches they have and the contact hours that your coaches have with kids. Yeah, um, yeah I suppose, look, uh, it's, it's, it's in vogue now since uh, comments made uh, in recent days and, and the commentary in general about uh, funding for game development. Uh, but I suppose, look, in me, we've been we were very fortunate in that uh, a couple of years ago uh, we put together we put together uh, a committee that was made up of fairly influential people uh, and some county board officials. So on that committee, we would have had uh, the likes of Sean Boyle and Colm O'Rourke, Jerry McEntee, then John Kavanagh from the from the county board and myself. Um, it was to look at, I suppose, it was to look at obviously football as a whole, but where we were going to go. And one of the main things was was for us to, I suppose, get extra funding to, uh, or to seek extra funding to put more GPOs or GDAs into clubs and uh, into schools. So we put a proposal to uh, to Crow Park, to Park Duffy at the time, and uh, in conjunction with Leinster Council, um, that was that was successful, and I suppose that was the inception of the East Leinster project, whereby it was funding allocated for ourselves, Kildare, Wicklow and Louth. So off the back of that, we decided to go with a model very. This was very similar to, to the Dublin model in that uh, I suppose the clubs were the clubs were looking for they were looking for the resources uh, at at the time. We just didn't have enough bodies that bodies on the ground. So the clubs were willing to put money towards towards the coach. So the model we built off was similar, as I said, to Dublin, whereby a club would would part fund a GPO as a whole, or we would share GPOs with different clubs, or else spread a GPO across a number of clubs depending on population depending on, I suppose, the size of the club, whether it's a dual club, the number of primary schools in the catchment area, the number of secondary schools in the catchment area. So that all fed into, into the model. And I suppose at the, at the moment now we have 22 full-time staff uh, working in games development. OK, and that's up from how many in, before the East Leinster project started? Before the East Leinster project, you were looking at, we had we had about six, three, uh, three of which were part-time. So like it's a substantial increase, which has allowed us to do so much more, uh, like... Those, one of the main metrics in the early stages was was, was trying to see how, how we could increase participation, increase contact hours in the schools, and uh, over the course of about two years, that that has increased for, uh, increased by about eighty one percent. Right. So just to show, like by, by being in the schools there and getting more contact hours, that we would like to think, whilst well, you can't measure it just at the moment because it's only it's only up and running, but that that will, will help deliver what we're trying to achieve in a number of years' time. So, sorry, that's a very important point. Um, I was going to ask exactly how long has it... Because the East Leinster project gets talked about just in the last couple of months. I've seen it mentioned, and I was like, oh, am I supposed to know what this is? Because I haven't really heard that much about it. How old is this project, and how long have you had these extra staff? Well, it's... Uh, I suppose it, it, it... The plan kind of goes back to late 2015, early 16, but it's really in place 2017, so we are only... The majority of clubs are only in year two of, of the project. Now, initially, this is all it was all passed the Cushta Bonish D on a three-year period. But uh, I, I would be very hopeful that very hopeful that it is extended uh, far beyond that initial three years. Okay. Well, look, this is really interesting to me because everybody's um, constantly saying that. Um, there, well, there's two schools of thoughts. One is that the dubs need to have their funding slashed and it needs to be redistributed to everybody else. Or the other one is we need to bring the other counties up to where Dublin are going. And it, it's clear that. In Mead, certainly that seems to be working. If the if the figures, and we're only really eighteen months into this project, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, I, I suppose look, every time every time there's a result at senior level, there's always a finger pointed as to what's been done and what's been done. But like, we we won't we really won't see the fruits of the labour for a number of years. And I, I think I think people have to be very patient with it. Okay, with the, with the people that we have, with the resources we have, there has been there has been definitely an improvement in structures. Uh, I think. Definitely, both volunteer and full time. We, we, we have recruited a lot of really, really good people in the background. Um, I think when, when people see the things are done right, done right, they're more willing to get involved. So, I think 
in the short term, yes, there's definitely there's definitely um, there's definitely a lot of positives. But again, it's, it's something that you're, you're constantly working on, and you, you always want to try and uh, I suppose uh, improve improve what you're doing. Like the, all, the, the idea of going into the primary schools is obviously it's about the recruitment of, of new players and, and new people into the GA. Um, so again, we probably won't see we won't see the benefits of that for a number of years. Okay, so is the amount of funding that this has specifically gone into this project is that a public is that a matter of public records? It, yeah, yeah, it would be, be reflective in the, in the annual figures. So, our, so the, the funding that we had been getting previously has, has been bumped up, um, similar to the, the four other the three other counties that are mentioned in, in the East Leinster project. Okay, so is it five hundred grand for each of the counties? Is that what the figure was? Roughly? Uh, it was, no, well, it was, an, it was an extra across across the four counties, an extra 500 per annum. Okay. So that was on top, on top of what was previously being received by uh, by the four counties. Okay. So, Anthony, the, the argument that the other counties need to get their houses in order is like, well, as soon as they got the funding to do it, they've got their houses in order. Correct. Yeah. But, and also, you, you know, hear what Seamus is saying there. You've gone from a staff of or, or three full-time, three part-time to 22. So the, all, those people have to get paid. Uh, whether the clubs are uh, helping out or not. So there's obviously going to be an expense. Um, and I can see, you actually see it, you, you can follow it on, 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 on social media, you can see the different uh, games promotion officers going into the schools. Like, I mean, they're flat out in the schools, and it's brilliant because, like, people say, look at Kerry. Kerry had a, like, Kerry, everyone nearly plays football in Kerry, you know, so you, and you've had a lot of teachers, you've a lot of ex-players, teachers who are in schools, who are ha- helping out, in Mead, obviously, with the 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 you know the catchment area, with the with the build up of the schools uh, on the border areas around side Dublin, you've got massive schools now with kids from all different walks of life. Um, so it's brilliant to have actual officers in there who are first of all able to actually help the teachers out, you know, and actually say, well, listen, we can do it this way, small sided games or whatever it is, and obviously increase the skill levels and just hopefully feed it through. And as Seamus says, you're not going to see really the outturn of that for probably five or ten years, but it's all incremental change. And as you say, the major thing is, once the funding was there, well, the things can be put in place. Like Seamus is on, I'm not going to say it, this is not a saddle up to him, but the amount of work that's being done on the ground um, he's quite right. People that say, you know, very, very short-termism, oh, why isn't it feeding through to the senior team? Well, actually, it is. But uh, un- underneath that, it's feeding through to the 14s, the 16s, the minors, you know, the under-20s. You can start to see it coming. But it only happens because the resources were put in place and then the actual structures could be implemented and put into, in, in, into, into operation. And the resources are put in place centrally. The, the counties can't generate this type of cash on their own or take the risk that we're going to employ 20 people on a three-year contract uh, without the backing of, of the central GA funding. Well, first of all, there's the risk of, you know, you go to, into your club. So first of all, you have to sell it to the club and then the club have to sell it to the members. Right? So the club sell it to the members, you know, we're going to hire Jer Gilroy. He's going to cost us 50, 30 grand, 40 grand a year, whatever it is, and we're going to pay for that. After year two, when there's another, people are going, why are we, what, what, what has Jer Gilroy done? Because you're not going to see, yeah. you're not going to see the, the, the fruits of the labour straight away. So there has to be buy-in from everyone. Um, um, and what helps that buy-in is that, listen, we're going to put some in, you also put some in, um, and, and we'll do this together. Uh, whereas if it was just left in the club, I would imagine, unless there was kind of instant success, there would certainly be a bit of, uh, you know, short-termism and kind of like, well, we're not seeing this, so why are we paying for this? Yeah, Seamus, I, I presume the response from the clubs has, as time has gone on, <coughs> they've begun to see the benefits of this and, and they realise that they're part of an overall county-wide structure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Look, I, I think for... To be honest, like the fact that clubs were coming seeking it was, was like that, straight away we were onto a winner there. So like there was there was a hard sell because to be fair there is there is finance involved, and but we're all aware that it, it's very difficult to raise money uh, in clubs. There's all like between running up teams, between infrastructure projects and, and all the rest. So like I think I think people are, are more than willing to invest in this type of initiative because they, they do see it as a long term investment. Like there will be a return. So again, from a club's perspective, whether they produce competitive senior teams whether they produce let's say for example like they may want to maybe have three four adult teams in 10 years time uh, like there's, there's loads of different goals and objectives that each club have but i think the merit the merit in it initially is is to try and get a foothold in the primary schools and trying to feed primary schools into the into the club um 
and then also like one of the, one of the, the, the key one of the key um, initiatives that the, the coaches do is, is obviously like the, the coach to coach. So they're raising the standard of coaching that the kids receive by volunteer coaches. Yeah. So that's hugely important. And this is something that obviously Dublin have been doing for a decade, and so there's been a knock-on impact. <laughs> you, you, like, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, Seamus, it must really greet you uh, that you know when you hear the thing of, oh well, everyone else has to get their house in order and get their structures right. You know, it, it, it does. Again, like Auntie, we, we've, we've spoken on this before. Like, it, 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 like everything is very short term. Like as I said, a result at senior level and straight away they strip up the script, start from scratch. But like that, that's that's not the case. Again, like there are a lot of really good good things going on uh, in Mead and throughout Leinster. To be honest, I would see it. I've seen it in a number of different counties. Um, it's just, I suppose, that where we are at this moment in time, people people feel that there's nothing being done. But if you're to scratch the surface, go into the clubs, see what's going on in primary schools. Uh, even if you lose, you say from Mead's perspective, if you look at maybe even our development squads or our talent academy, like we're, we're we're competitive at those levels and the people we have involved are really, really good people as well. So I, I think from that side of things, we will, we will possibly see the fruits of our labour a little bit quicker. But I think long term, you're, you're definitely looking five, ten years down the line. Yeah, and the whole point about it is to raise the number of people playing and ultimately um, to grow the sport as opposed to just produce a, a senior inter-county team, which I think a lot of the conversation ends up being specifically about when actually yeah. this is about making sure that clubs are healthy, vibrant, and they, they continue to be uh, a key part of their community. Right. Seamus, will you stay with us? Because we've got Shane Flanagan on the line as well. Um, Shane is a good Johnstown Bridge man, I think, and uh, is also the Leinster GAA operations manager. So, um, Shane... <coughs> You're welcome to the show, and thanks for taking the call. Good morning to you. Uh, so what's your role in all this? Uh, I suppose my role at provincial level is to, I suppose, oversee and, and manage this whole, I suppose, the games development side of the house in the province. Um, Seamus, Seamus outlined at the beginning the genesis of the East Leinster and where it started, and it started a meeting in Dunboyne Castle with the people that Seamus mentioned, Jim Bulger, who was now chairman of Leinster, and uh, Porrick Duffy attended that meeting, and Pat Daly. And um, I suppose it's it's ironic with all the chat around the SRC report of late that if you, if you study the document in detail, that aside from what it recommended for Dublin, it also recommended that the provinces or the, the counties surrounding Dublin would have to be looked at too in the same context uh, as Dublin at the time. And, and ironically, those counties were Kildare, Mead, Wicklow and, um, and Loud. And I suppose... Um, we're, we're, we only got there in, in, in 2016. And as Seamus said, the project is only really up and running now in 2017. Um, the points that Seamus made are spot on. We've, we've definitely made, made progress in that short period between, we did analysis there at the end of last year between 2018 and 2016. And there's been huge increases in terms of participation that primary schools were coaching 84,000 kids in the primary schools across the five counties because... In 2017, we added Wexford to the list. Um, so we can definitely see, and we're, we're quite happy, and, and Seamus made a point about the fund and staying there. I, I, we've, I recently I met with, with, with Jeremy Ryan and, 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 and people in Crow Park, and I've no doubt there's not going to be any issue but con- retaining the funding because they can see locally that, 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 that the numbers that are, going up, are going up all the time, and it is about participation. And I think what it, which was a chair or, or Anthony, one of you said earlier on that regardless of regardless of the performance of a senior county team, it's our job to ensure that the GA is vibrant locally in every community, and that can only be done if we've people active. So that that's what we're really, we're, we're really trying to do here. Okay, so you're you're hopeful slash confident that um, because it's been a success so far, uh, and look, I think everybody's seen the Dublin model work. It yeah. has worked very well in Dublin in getting participation numbers up and in making um, the GEA strong in, in certain areas. It still has a lot of work to do in certain areas within Dublin. And I'm sure that's the same in the, in the East Leinster project as well. Yeah, as I, I suppose, Jerry, sorry to interrupt, but I, I suppose I've chapped to somebody at Dublin County Board recently as well. And they just made a point that it took a, took a good few years for the GPO model and that structure to embed in Dublin. And he said, you know what, it's a bit unfair at the moment that's a year and a bit almost, or two years into the East Leinster project, it's suddenly under the microscope. Um, so, Seamus is right, this needs time to bed in. Um, would, we've, would we've invested what we did if the structures weren't right in Mead and Kildare and the other counties? No, we haven't, and that's because you have people like Seamus there now, Jamie Queenie, games manager, 
uh, good people involved in the county board and similarly in Kildare. So it's easier for us to say, well, listen, and Crow Park to say, well, listen, there is a structure there and let, let's try and get it right. But, but coaching is one part of it, lads. Coaching, coaching is one part of it. The other part of it is about getting the management and organisation structures right in counties. And to add to that, uh, like Seamus is in the position, is it three years, Seamus, now? Two, three years, operations manager? Five, is it? Five. Is it three or five, Seamus? Uh, five. <laughs> Sorry, Seamus. But, but listen, relatively speaking, that's, that, that's compared to other counties, that's a, that's a recent enough appointment. And I suppose what we're trying to do is also look at can we support counties and put a network of people around Seamus through what, we, what we're describing as a shared services model. So in April, for example, we met with county secretaries and operations managers like Seamus. I know Seamus had a county board meeting the same night. But, but after that, our management committee passed that we will endeavour to become a shared, shared services centre um, here whereby in, in, the, in the pillars of finance, commercial communications, uh, sports science and areas like that, that we will endeavour to try and, and resource counties differently through a shared services model. So if that means a person looking after five or six counties in, in accounting or bookkeeping or whatever, that's, that's the way we want to go because there's a finite amount of money in every county. It doesn't make counties doesn't make sense for counties to go and employ people and stretch the resources even further. So that's where we see us as a province uh, helping counties going forward. I think that's a great idea. And and so, uh, sorry, are you guys, where are you guys based? We're based in Port Leash. Grand, I thought that was Port Leash, Grand. Yeah. Okay, so essentially Port Leash, you would have an office that runs the, the back end, the back office of the various counties to help them administer all the rest of the stuff. The county board continues to be the volunteer core of the uh, decision making to say exactly what, what everybody wants to do but in terms of everything else commercial uh, fixtures even like I, I, I'm not saying that's where you are right now but this is where that could get to because it's where it could get to Jar, and, and I'm not saying like Seamus is listening in there and Seam, Seamus might say well listen a couple of those areas don't apply to us we're quite happy that we've either we've access to people who can help <coughs> out but that's fine but we Leinster are very diverse. We, we, it's, you could almost divide Leinster into, from a socio-economic and demographic uh, context, into four or five regions. You have Dublin. You have, you have a county like Wexford, for example, which is which is a dual, strong, well-populated county, uh, and it's a huge, vibrant GA county. You have, you have Kilkenny, which is hurling in its, in its main. You have the four Leinster counties we talked about in East Leinster, and then in the middle there we have. You have Longford, Westmead, Leash, uh, Offaly and Carlow, who are very different to everybody else. They're small, populated, but by God, they're brilliant dual counties. And they're driving both codes as, as hard as they can. So we're going to have to look at resourcing them differently than we maybe are, are Mead, Wexford, Kilkenny and so on. So Can I ask a question on okay. that? Because yeah. one of the things that strikes me is that um, in, in this whole conversation, Dublin's ability to generate half a million in sponsorship deals, at, not at the drop of a hat, obviously, with loads and loads of hard work and very well resourced and a brilliant office in Parnell Park whose job it is to run that. Is there, is there any thought being given to uh, trying to unify the rest of the province and say, you know, to a rival of AIG, for example, you can come in and, and, uh, and be the shirt sponsor for the men's and women's teams and the underage teams in all the rest of the counties in Leinster or even the East Leinster counties so that, you know, you, you buy a package off the shelf that's going to reach nearly 700,000, 800, 900,000 people. So, so it is actually something that could rival the dubs and you begin to generate massive amounts of money that you share equally then or as, as the need requires with a little bit of performance uh, related in terms of sponsorship deals. Is, is that the type of thing that we might see down in the future? Well, there was some talk of that at central level maybe a couple of years ago, but it is difficult, Jared, because at the end of the day, you do have some fantastic people who are very willing to sponsor their own counties and they want their name in the jersey. But you have touched on something that, that certainly there is potential in, and that is the whole area of corporate social responsibility and the finance around that. And what I, what I think there's possibility is that and again, go, looking at the area of coaching and and uh, uh, and that side of it, and, and even resourcing that shared services model that we talked about, whether it's a partnership with a company who has uh, people with that expertise, that 
their sponsorship could, I suppose, uh, expedite what we're trying to do through the shared service. Or they might say, well, listen, we don't want to be your shirt sponsor, but we want to be associated with, with you increasing the number of kids playing the game across five or six counties. So, of, of course, there's huge potential there. And I suppose a conversation like this on the airways helps to maybe promote, promote that idea as well, you know? Yeah. Because, like... We, there's two there's two conversations happening. There's the sense that there's an imbalance between the funding that Dublin gets versus the rest of the country, and then there's the other one, which is the finance is helping Dublin become the best football team of all time. And it's hard to separate these two things. They are twin conversations, I think, that need to run parallel. The, the other, obviously, the reason that we're, we have both you on is that um, the conversation during the week. Um, is it is it true that Mead gets more per capita funding than Dublin? Um, Shane, is that a true statement? I would, I would have said it. Listen, it's a very simple metric, and uh, when you added on what would Mead were, sorry, Mead and Kildare were getting previously on top of the new funding, uh, as I said, it's, it was a simple metric I used at the time. Uh, Anthony mentioned earlier about selling this to clubs, and it was difficult. And Seamus mentioned that as well. And I met with the clubs in Kildare in the SGA club one night, and we knew it was going to be tough because of. The the the, um, the 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 constraints clubs are under, and 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 it came up about the question. A question came up, and one way of answering it was, well, lads, listen, and again, it's a simple metric per head of population. At the end, if this goes through, uh, Kildare will be getting more money per head of population than than uh, than, uh, than Dublin, and it was it was my way of answering a question, and it was my way as much to kind of sell it to people. That listen, lads. If we all row in behind this, look at what we can achieve. It's through selling a vision as much as anything. So yeah. that's how I did it, lads. Okay. Um, you can look at you can look at teams. You look at player registration. If you use the, the head of population, well, people in Cork are going to say, "My God, lads, <laughs> sure, we're being totally under resourced." And uh, and uh, equally with teams, I think Cork is the most teams than anybody else. You know. So what what is a fair way of of, of analysing where the money is distributed? Do you think, Shane? Oh. It is. It's difficult, Ger, and, and and I've thought about this for a long time recently. And and you also have to factor in maybe the local challenges as well. Um, and I suppose I, I'll throw it this way to you. you: you take and you know Kildare well. You take Newbridge. Both Sarsfield and Moorfield haven't bought. They haven't. They haven't engaged in the East Leinster scheme because they feel that they're doing quite well what they're doing at the moment and they're driving. But there's a local issue there, and you know what it is. If you drive into Newbridge and during the county final week and you come to the post office from the Allenwood direction, to the left it's Sarsfield Slags, to the right it's Morfield. And it's the rivalry local that's driving participation. And I'd say if I did analysis on participation in Newbridge, it would be quite high. But, but then there's other areas where culturally the GA isn't strong. Um, so we have to take account of that. We equally have to take account of that... People talk about, oh, the big surge in population in Kildare and Mead. That's not, it's not as straightforward as that. People who moved in from, from out of Dublin to, to, uh, to Mead and Kildare and elsewhere, up from the country, it takes, pe- it takes time for new communities and people within new communities to embed in the local environment. And I'm from Johnstone Bridge. We've been quite lucky. Uh, the majority of people who move into our village have, have uh, a grow for the GAA, I coached under 16's team, and, and just last week I said to the chairman of the club, "We we would not we would not be able to field as a club if it wasn't for people moving into the village." And that wasn't a huge amount of families, but it helped us. Whereas in other areas, it's been a, ch- a huge challenge. And, and I don't belabor on the point, but when I was when I first began to work in the GA in 2004, I, I was involved with club pal- policy and planning, which was the rollout of club development plans. And Sean Kelly wanted every club in the country to have a club development plan. And I don't know how many clubs I was across the country. But what I was thinking about last night, I do recall, because you put up on the screen what SWOT analysis, what are your challenges? Back then, a big, big issue was how do we tap into these new communities? So it's not straightforward. And, 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 and I'll just make one other point. Last Saturday, last Saturday, there was obviously a lot went on at Central Council, but... A very significant report uh, chaired by Michael Dempsey, and I'm on that committee. It'll be the Talent Academy and Player Development Review uh, Report, and that was adopted by Central Council. And through that, we met with a thousand people across the country, 
in every county. We met lots of different stakeholders. I fundamentally believe that report will assist in terms of, I suppose, what I would feel is add the icing to the cake of what's going on on the ground, through the goal games now, through coaching in schools, and and helping players to reach their potential. And when we're talking reach their potential, great if they play for Mead or Kildare, but we want young fellas to play for their for the for us fundamentally to continue to play with their club up to senior level. Yeah. And and I can't stress enough there's four key pillars to that. One is that we're recommending a new player development framework. Secondly, and this is important, we talk about improving our governance and organisation structures to support that player development pathway. The other is coach education because coach is crucial and that's what we're trying to do with the tourist programme. And the last thing, and I think this has been, it's been commented on and it's been maybe a little bit dismissed, games and the provision of games are the simplest and best forms of games development. And the big thing we have in that, we have to get our games programme right at club level and, and a county and inter-county level, a squad level in particular, to get that right. And if we get that right, I believe every county can achieve their potential. They may not win All-Irelands or whatever else, but if we can get a more equitable structure in competitions, maybe that's fairer too. Yeah, I think I think you're talking a lot of sense. And I think, um, look, one of the aspects of this is that a lot of that work that you're talking about and those reports, we don't really get the opportunity to talk about them or to hear about them. And maybe that's as much our fault in the media as it is and, and that we don't ask about what's going on. But like, I'm interested here now that we haven't a chance to talk to you. What's your frustrations when you see the debate about the funding conversation? When you're, when you're looking at that, do you think, yeah, they're all fair points, we need to get out and address them? Or do you think, ah, lads, this is missing the whole point? What, what, when you're no, reading... No, for fundamentally, and again, Seamus made the point that very much the, the conversation is based around what is an exceptional team at the moment. Um, and there's no doubt about that. Um, bearing in mind, too, that I'd say... It's unique probably in the history of the association that uh, two exceptional leaders and managers and Pat Gilroy and Jim Gavin followed each other. I'm from, like, Mick O'Dwyer left, left Kerry, uh, fortunes dipped. Sean Boylan left Mead, fortunes dipped. It's very, very hard to get the continuum that they had with two exceptional people. And but what I will say is player development is complex. And I heard you just when I tuned in this morning, and I'm sure I picked it up right, but the one thing, I suppose one thing stands out for me in Dublin, at Dublin at the moment is the games programme all the way up. And Pat Gilroy helped, worked with me in a project in Wicklow two years ago. And his young fellow was down the night we launched the plan. And he asked his young fellow to tell him how many games he'd played. And this was in October. And the young lad played 40 games at that stage. And that could be three times the amount of a lot of other counties across the country. Uh, and games are important and Anthony you played in Dublin for a while as well the quality and the standard of the senior football in Dublin is such that the Brian Fenton's of this world can develop even outside of the inter-county environment because the standard is so high and it does help bring players through so when, 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 and people have been dismissive over the last few days about cross-county leagues and stuff like that they're, they're integral to the development of players. And player development is, is very, very complex. And uh, it'd be well worth your while to, for, for Mick Dempsey, and, and Mick will get the chance to explain to people and rationalise to people what is involved. And I think the report is going to be a real eye-opener. You make a point there about lots of other reports. We, we actually had, I think we still have a page in the report where we identified six other reports that effectively we... <laughs> we nearly combined to write our own report and they all gathered dust, unfortunately. And uh, all the answers and all the, all the solutions are there before. All the solutions are in the SRC report. Uh, unfortunately, for whatever reason, things haven't uh, moved as quickly. SRC report recommended that 10 counties be identified for funding for football. That's happened. Uh, last week, Kush de uh Leash were, were granted 30,000 the previous to that, Carlo were granted money. Longford are in the mix as well. Wickler are in the mix. Um, and not sure else in Leinster. Um, so things are happening. And I suppose, I think you've probably t- touched the, t- hit the nail on the head there. Maybe we need to communicate it differently and, and get the message out there. Um, but 
there is a lot happening and uh, you take the funding argument there is a there is a balance happening 200,000 of the money we're getting for East Leinster was deducted from, from Dublin at the time and that was through Porrick Duffy and in fairness John Horan was involved in that at the time and uh, and and uh, so there has been an effort I suppose and Tom Ryan mentioned that on the Sunday game piece there a few weeks ago that there has been a reduction and if if um, that 200,000 has made a big difference because we have 30 odd extra staff and uh, they're working very very hard uh, I have sympathy for people in the organisation who are constantly listening to over the last few weeks the commentary about funding for GPOs and people are forgetting that these people that's their job and they're talking about my my livelihood and I think people need to be a little bit more sympathetic to that as well. Yeah, um, the, the thing is that it, the wrong solution here is to cut and punish Dublin for doing well and the right thing is to say these projects work we need to find ways to fund them. Again, absolutely and if you read the SRC Dublin have followed it to a T in fairness to them. Right. Uh, it's an excellent blueprint. Uh, they even recommended a commercial manager uh, and I suppose it took, it took a while for the likes of Mossy to appear but it did happen and it's an excellent blueprint of brilliant guy in Stephen O'Shockensy there and Colin Burchill driving the whole player development thing in the county and ironically you know in our report coming out it's positions like that, that, like that that we're recommending for the rest of the country so it's just a pity in ways things haven't moved quickly enough Okay. The answers are all there already. Look, you've been great with your time. Just uh, on the issue of a um, commercial manager, would you be open to hiring a commercial manager for the East Leinster teams to see if if something could be done to accommodate the, the local businessman who wants to be involved and local business owners who want to be involved and then also maybe trying to get a national brand who would be able to trump that and make everybody be happy because there's loads of national brands who would love to have their name on the Kildare, Meath, Wicklow and Louth jersey thinking there's 600,000 people that I'm talking to over the course of 12 months. Yeah, listen, as, as I said to you, our management committee in fairness adopted and passed and approved um, that model that we that we presented to the counties. We're, we're going to, it's going to be slow, Ger, uh, but absolutely, I think Yes, we, we've John Hockney working here at the moment. He's, he's, his job is divided between communications and commercial, and that's so. Is he stretched? He is probably, and so we have to look at alternative ways of maybe bringing capacity in underneath him as well. But at the end of the day, Leinster and Dublin are the biggest market, and sponsors, companies, that's that's what they're after. So yes, I'm quite happy to sit down with anybody in Crow Park. Uh, Seamus would say he's doing a hell of a good job himself there in the commercial field, uh, but uh, and he has done that. And um, but absolutely, I think there's huge scope. Yeah, I think there's a model going forward here that will work. Um, give us time. That's all we're asking people to get it right. I think, and that's that's fair enough, especially when we have the opportunity to have these conversations. Seamus, last word to you on that. On that I mean, obviously, I, I, I'm not in any way casting aspersions on the county's ability to raise their own funds, but by your powers combined, all of a sudden, you do have a much bigger market, and that's the type of thing that um, marketing managers are going, oh, yeah, okay, it was 100,000, now it's 400,000. Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm interested. What have you got for me? Yeah, look, I, I think it's, it's a fair point. Uh, like, I will... I will say that we're very, very fortunate in me that we have a lot of really good sponsors who have a genuine interest in how the games are run in the county and how our, how our teams go. So we are, in that regard, probably uh, one of the more, uh, probably in one of the better positions than, than the majority of other counties. But I think if you look at the greater whole, yeah, uh, the more the more people that you can target, I'm sure, uh, I'm sure there are companies out there that would see that definitely as a, as a good proposition. Yeah. Was there anything else that, that um, we were chatting about there that you wanted to, before we wrap this up? Because I, I know, again, it's a, a rare enough opportunity that we end up talking for 25 minutes about the, the funding, and it's not exclusively about Dublin, but um, when you're listening to the conversations, what's your main frustration about how the conversation is always framed? Uh, look, I, I suppose, again, come on, not, not, to, not to hammer the point, but like, again, the short-termism of, of kind of, well, Dublin are, are a superpower and all the rest. Yes, they to be fair, Dublin just have an incredible football team there at the, at the moment. Have they their structures correct? Yes, they do. But like, we're definitely, I would feel, both from a games programme and from uh, 
from let's say the, the development side of things, we, we're definitely heading in the right direction. Uh, I would I would look I would look favourably on what's going to happen in Meath in the future. Um, I suppose the other thing there as well, when when Shane mentioned about Anthony playing at Dublin club, I was just wondering which one Anthony has had so many clubs now at this stage. Oh, uh, I wasn't I wasn't sure which one he was referring to. <laughs> Oh, I'm not going to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> right, on that note, my thanks to Seamus Kearney, the Mead Operations Manager, and to Shane Flanagan, the Leinster GA Operations Manager. Lads, it was illuminating. Thanks a million for, um, much, for joining us this morning. And thanks, we'll, uh, we'll talk to you again thanks. soon at some point.